Hello Internet, I'm Nick Gacciani and these are my adventures backstage. So once again I'm faking my setup, as you can see here, curtains poorly hung, a little wrinkled. I still don't have a permanent setup yet, so deal with it. Anyway, this week I thought I'd change things up a little. Instead of doing a just general how-to for something that I know how to do already, I am going to experiment with you guys. I am currently doing props for a production of August Osage County at Theatricum Botanicum, and that's in LA, a really cool outdoor theater. And in the production, they break a bunch of plates. Now, yeah, I could go to the dollar store and get a bunch of plates, and it'd be fine, but the things that we run into is that sometimes they don't break. Safety for the actors, because then you just have shards of ceramic plates all over the place, and budget. So they make things out of sugar and stuff like that that you can order online, but it's really expensive for just like one plate, and that would be more than my entire budget for all of the props. And I also have to get a rubber frying pan, so that was off the table. So I looked up, like you do, like how most of you probably have gotten here, I googled how to make a breakable plate. And I got this great video tutorial from beatdownboogie.com and I watched it. Uh, they made this plate for a fight scene in a movie and it seemed to work really well so now I'm gonna try it following their instructions. And I'll probably put the link to their video down below just in case this blows up in my face. I mean I'm not letting anything on fire so it shouldn't blow up in my face. But you never know. Anyway, let's get the ingredients. Alright, so the things that you're gonna need. All-purpose lube. Not that kind of lube. I really don't think you want this anywhere near those bits. Plaster of Paris. Water. A big bowl that you're gonna use as a mold. Measuring cup of some sort. I don't have real measuring cups, so this is gonna be my fake one. And something to mix your water and plaster of Paris in. The first thing that they said to do was to lube up your mold. They suggested these. The bottom is about the size of a plate, and it gives you a nice little ridge, so you're not just, you don't have just this disc it actually looks like it's gonna have some shape to it. Direction sprayer, and let's stand for several minutes. Yeah, oh nice and good, ooh. That is pungent. So I have a couple different molds so that I can make several at a time. So I'm gonna lube up a couple. <laughs> ooh. We can put the lube to the side. Next thing, so they said there should be a two to one mix with the Plaster of Paris. So I have two cups of water here. I'm gonna pour that in. Now, four cups of Plaster of Paris. And I'm making a mess already. They said to go through and kind of make sure it's not clumpy already. So here it goes. I'm gonna add Plaster of Paris to the water, mix it up, pour it in the mold, they said when pouring it in, you just want pretty much just enough to cover it. You don't want it to be too thick so it actually breaks. So we'll see with my guesstimates how that works out. Now the trick is to let it sit for half an hour and let it dry. Pop it out of the mold and let it set and then break it. All right, see you in half an hour. All right guys, so it's been half an hour, so time to see what's cooking. All right, so they feel dry, except for the mass amount of lube that I put in there. Yeah, there's so much lube, it's like actually just about to drip. So in the video that they did, they just kind of turned this over and it popped out. I'm a little scared of what's gonna happen. Okay, so that's what happens when you don't pay attention to it. So that was a disaster. Ooh, this has a lot more weight to it. Okay. Okay, so we've got a plate here. It looks like this is gonna work. I just have to do it again with a little less lube. I think that was my problem. I think I just used a little too much lube on there. There is a such thing as too much lube, guys. So I'm gonna let this set for another couple hours and then we'll see how it shatters. Two things. One, I went back and rewatched the video explaining how to make this, and they explained how it's a chemical reaction, the water and the plaster of Paris, and it gets hot. That's why it kind of bubbles, which makes sense, and that it's not actually dry until it's cool. So this is now cool. 
And look, it's like, it feels like a plate. So I went and I redid the whole thing and I made a new one. So we're gonna try this one now. Turn it upside down. Oh, oh, hey, hey! Look at that. It looks like an actual plate. That's kind of awesome. So it works. Well, at least the making the plate part. So now is the big test, seeing how it shatters. I'm gonna take the uh, pre-broken plate and I'm gonna use that because this is pretty much done. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Now let's see if we just go here. It breaks, it makes a nice sound when it breaks. It kinda, it's not sharp. So safety is good, function is good, cost, I'll get about six plates per one of those boxes. I'm sure I can get a bigger box somewhere else. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. But yeah, so that's all for today. I hope you learned something. I sure did. I learned how to break one of these plates and I'm still breaking it. But yeah, if there's any other prop that you think I should learn how to make that would be interesting, let me know in the comments below. If you have any other types of, any other recipes or ways to make breakable plates, I'm also interested in that, so leave that down below. Yeah, remember, do what you love, love what you do, and uh, don't get hurt. Nick out. I googled how... You didn't see that.